no doubt that uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. Hastert's probably guilty from the sources I have. It looks like they've got a pretty clear-cut case here, but I don't know Wayne Madsen's take on it yet. We're about to find out. Investigative journalist, former NSA officer Wayne Madsen, but he has said for a long time Hastert was totally compromised and that it was reportedly uh, dealing with ties back to when he was a wrestling coach. No one else I'd ever heard say that. Madsen has incredible sources, has spent upwards of half a year off and on in Illinois investigating the whole crime syndicate there, so we'll talk to him for the news behind the news, the story behind the story, the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say in a moment. But first, a new intro promo that our own Jakari Jackson put together. I thought we'd premiere that here right now. In today's world, abortion supporters routinely attend pro-life rallies and attempt to bully activists. If you have a problem and need a smelly group of commie devil worshipers, maybe you can call the A-Team. How many did I adopt? I kill my kids. I kill my kids. Hey, we saw your Facebook with your communist hammer and sickle. That's pretty cool, man. Is that you on the Facebook? <laughs> Is there a Facebook page of you with a hammer and sickle? I don't think so. I don't hurt children. I love Satan. <laughs> How do you get your abortions paid for? I pay for them. I thought really? you said I mean, free. You uh, upwards of 50. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. You, you piece of <laughs> Bunch of misogynist mother <laughs> Take your male privilege somewhere else. How about you being aggressive? I'm being aggressive. Come on, and us! Get us! Wow! Watch out! These, that's the guys that attack Alex Jones. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. We should call that video pro-abortionists caught chanting Satan again. Or new video, abortionists worship Satan. And we need to put that video up on infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. And look, I'm not here bashing women that have had abortions. The point is the people driving and pushing it are into the occult. I just learned this from investigating over the years. And it's an anti-human, anti-minority movement to get rid of mainly poor black people and Hispanics. And so I'm just sick of the Democratic Party trying to race bait all day when more blacks have been aborted since Roe v. Wade than have been born. And there's new numbers out today We've aborted more people since Roe v. Wade than lived in the country in 1880. CNS News reports on that. So Margaret Sanger, the, the Rockefellers, they taught Hitler everything he knew. Just admit the roots of what's pushing it, okay? I'm not here judging you. I'm not here on some high horse saying, blah, 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 you're a killer. I, I've told people that I've been involved in abortions when I was younger. I think it's bad. It's wrong. I've repented of it, but I'm not here judging you. I'm simply saying it's, it's, it's treating humans like trash, and the anti-abortion pro-life people were right back in the 70s. Then it's old people, then it's babies, then it's cripples. Uh, oh, I was politically incorrect, but it's okay to kill them. Uh, it's the, it's the uh, disabled, it's the veterans on don't treat list. And they always confuse it with a right to die argument. Sure, individuals, I think, have a right to die. The problem is you can't have the state involved in it because it'll become euthanasia, and it is euthanasia now where the state decides to kill you. See, it's, it's, it's where the agenda comes from. We're going to Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com, best-selling author, probably, probably one of the most dialed-in, connected people ever. In fact, I'm surprised he's alive. A lot of people that he has put on the show that he's given his contact to have ended up dead. I, think, I can think of three or four of them right now. D.C. Madam and others. I mean, folks, we've had the Navy SEAL families on about that being a staged raid and saying it was a body double. Do you think it was fun meeting with people before they went public and knowing all this and being the first person to talk about it? Well, see, I love my peers. 
it feels so good to not be alone and to have people like Wayne Madsen. I'm not in competition. I wish there were 50,000 Wayne Madsons. I wish there was talk show hosts better than I am, better authors, better orators, better researchers. I want to win. I want to defeat this. I can feel the hair on the back of my neck standing up, folks. I got the feds following me around, contacting me, threatening me. I mean, it's not fun. But then I've got other feds that are good giving us information. There's a fight between good and evil in government, in corporations, in churches, in businesses, in our neighborhoods. And it's time for good people to stand up and say no. Now, Wayne Madsen will be with us 15 of the next hour. WayneMadsenReport.com. And I do not know his take, his view on all this yet. He's got a new report out, ISIS made in the USA. We'll talk about that in the next hour with him. Uh, we'll talk to him about the Patriot Act renewal that they're trying to ram through when it expires Sunday. Uh, we'll, we'll cover it all with Wayne Madsen today. But Wayne Madsen, investigative journalist, formerly in the NSA, is the only person I ever heard say that Hastert's compromised. We have the interview. Somebody should go try to pull those up. He's just been on so much it's hard to find. When he, in his investigations into Illinois corruption, Blagojevich and the rest of it said, Hastert's the big one. We now learn a grand jury indicted him last February. They waited till now, uh, and he joins us to give us his take on what's happening. We'll see if he agrees with my analysis, uh, but I'll defer to him. He's the Hastert expert, former Speaker of the House, indicted yesterday by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Wayne Madsen, what do you think's going on? Hi, Alex. Well, I reported on um, Hastert's uh, so-called misconduct. Hold on just a moment. We're going to start over. I'm going to back up with you. We're going to refocus, reset in there. Get everything going, okay? We're going to go now to Wayne Madsen. Wayne, go ahead. Okay, uh, on September 30th, 2006, I, I first reported on the web, my website uh, about this past misconduct of Dennis Hastert. Remember, he was Speaker of the House, third in line under presidential succession to the presidency. If I can just read this, because it's very interesting, this, this uh, background of Hastert and how he got to his, his position. Um, what I reported on September 30th, 2006, nine years ago, congressional sources told me that Hastert, while working from 1964 to 1980 as a popular history government teacher and wrestling coach at Yorkville High School in Yorkville, Illinois, uh, a suburb of Chicago, was the subject of persistent rumors about inappropriate contact with male members of his high school wrestling team. The culture of the times usually resulted in such alleged behavior being covered up by public and parochial school authorities. However, the rumors were enough for his Yorkville constituency to reject him when he ran for an open seat in the Illinois House of Representatives in 1980. However, Hastert lucked out when another sitting Republican House member who represented the three-seat district had a stroke and declined to run for re-election. The GOP machine bosses selected Hastert as the replacement candidate. Hastert served in Springfield from 80 to 86, six years to make the transformation from wrestling coach with that cloud surrounding himself to politician. In 1986, Hastert received another unexpected promotion after incumbent Republican U.S. Representative John Groberg was nominated for the, by the GIP, GOP for a second term. He was diagnosed with terminal cancer and fell into a coma. The Illinois Republican convention selected Hastert as a replacement on the ticket, a virtual election of the U.S. House in the strongly Republican district. So that that's how Hastert got in to the House of Representatives. He, he, he was rejected because of the rumors uh, surrounding him, uh, him as a high school wrestling coach. I heard from people in that particular town, Yorkville, and nearby that Hastert uh, was caught uh, uh, with you know inappropriate sexual contact with underage male members of his high school wrestling team he and isn't it funny he only got into these uh, political positions because either somebody had a stroke or somebody died of cancer i'm just speechless here because nine times out of ten wayne when I have a guest on like you who's predicted all this, who's broken this info, who had the courage to go with it. We can't find where you said it, but thank God you wrote about it at WayneMadsonReport.com. So if we can, please email us that story. 
I'd like to flashback, republish it today at Infowars.com, and I'd like to ask you to write a piece for us today, uh, tying it all together and then linking back to WayneMadsonReport.com, because it, it, it's, it's no exaggeration. I've 50 times or more, you have broken information that is just huge before anybody else does, I guess because you do old-fashioned investigative journalism. I know when you went to Illinois to investigate, you got some real serious death threats. You had to leave the U.S. for about four or five months. You came back and those, uh, the, the uh, I guess the contract that was out on you that you were warned about at the press club uh, was removed. Uh, but let me ask you this question. How have you stayed alive this long? <laughs> I guess I'm lucky. Uh, I, I have to give you some other anecdotes about Hastert over the years. These are kind of humorous. I remember... Uh, first of all, when I first reported this about Hastert, this this was in the middle of the Mark Foley scandal. You remember he was the Republican representative yes. from Florida who uh, was uh, caught uh, uh, trying to solicit sex from underage male pages. Uh, Hastert's name also came up in the late 80s. If, if you recall, the Washington Times, which is a conservative paper, broke this story about the Franklin cover-up. Hastert's and the midnight uh, callboy underage ring. Absolutely. And Hastert's name came up in those rumors. And uh, it's interesting because uh, in 2006, when Hastert's name came up again uh, in the Foley Pagegate scandal, the Washington Times called for his resignation as House Speaker. I think they also knew about his background. But uh, it's it wasn't just Hastert. Of course, Hastert uh, was involved in trying to cover things up for Foley and included many, many other members of the House of Representatives, including uh, John Boehner, who's now the Speaker of the House. And, and remember how Hastert became Speaker. Newt Gingrich resigned a, a, amid a, a, a scandal. Uh, and then uh, Robert... I'll tell you what, Wayne, stay there, stay there. I want you to slowly walk through this when we come back, how it's one big nest of compromised individuals in the pedo club. And we're going to get a screenshot of the original as well and republish it for everybody at Infowars.com. I hope everybody realizes that as we're sitting here listening to Wayne Madsen, I, I don't normally hype stuff up like this because it's not hype. It's no brag. It's just fact. Do you understand he went to Illinois? He did investigations. He's been there more than seven times. He spent months there, in some cases each time, and he specifically broke the news as an investigative journalist that Dennis Hastert was picked out of a group of compromised pedophiles to be brought in out of nowhere and then to be made the Speaker of the House in just a few years, unheard of, because he was compromised, and he's in the same nest as John Boehner, who you wonder why he's so under control. Because the mafia that runs this country gets these pedophiles, these alleged pedophiles, and I say that with my eyes rolling, and puts them in there to then carry out the agenda because they can be destroyed at any time. And the bigger issue is, why are they burning him now? Why have they activated the FBI, who's compartmentalized and probably think they're doing a good job, to go in and do this now? We're going to make a big deal out of this because, I, I mean, I want Wayne Madsen to really roll through how this all ties together. And then we're going to put a special report together with his article. And the headline on his article should be, Investigative Journalist Broke Hastard uh, Molestation Story in 2006. Subheadline, uh, Politicians Controlled Via Sex Crimes. Connected to Boehner. I mean, boom. Because the only way to stop all this is to expose the blackmail ring and how it's operating. Well, we're going to break in three, four minutes, but, but try to encapsulate it right now, uh, Wayne, how you investigated it, who the players are, and how it's connected to Boehner, as you were just saying in the last segment. Well, I investigated the, um, uh, the Foley matter. That was Mark Foley, Republican from uh, uh, Florida who was actually uh, soliciting sex from underage male pages. You know, every decade, give or take a couple of years, we had a, an issue in that mostly in the House, but also in the Senate, but mostly the House, where we had this explosion of scandal about the pages. Uh, at first, uh, at, in the early 1980s, 
uh, it, it first uh, raised its ugly head. One of the people then who was implicated was a representative named Larry Craig, who was then a congressman from Idaho. Of course, we found out about him later. Um, in, in the late 80s, uh, we had the so-called Franklin scandal involving the Franklin Credit Union uh, in, ne in Nebraska. And, and again, we had midnight tours, as you showed earlier, the um, headline from the Washington Times uh, that was worked on by m my late colleague, Paul Rodriguez, uh, and got no attention from the Washington Post. As a matter of fact, I should point out that my story on Hastert in 2006 was met with derision by the mainstream media then uh, I noted this more. I note this morning they're all calling me up now <laughs> for uh, for comment and and my original sources. Um, so I think that's kind of um, it's huge. I'm giving you the floor when we come back in 70 seconds. I want you to continue to lay out more on how you were saying this was connected to Boehner. It's clear Boehner's being blackmailed. I mean, he's committing political suicide for the Republicans right now. He's selling the country out on the TPP on the borders. Why? Well, it's blackmail. Last night, uh, I was downtown having dinner with friends uh, at their condo, and I called Buckley, my cousin, uh, who also lives nearby, and I said, will you come by with the rig, the microphone and the iPhone, so we can do a report on Hastert? I was going to wait till today to cover it, but I decided instead to just do one last night. And then after I shot the report, or, or right before I shot the report, I thought, man, Wayne Madsen talked about how it's all a pedophile ring and tied to the, the, you know, this wrestling coach who they basically promoted so he'd be compromised. I need to get Wayne Madsen on. And, of course, he's being called by the media now because Wayne broke all this in his report. In fact, I have a copy of the report now you just sent me from 2006. But what was the title of the report then, Wayne? I, uh, I had several. I, I had probably about 10 reports from September 30th to October, around October the 10th, 2006. Uh, the first one was major cover-up suspected in GOP's Pagegate, now rocking Capitol Hill. Hastert's name was mentioned in that report. Uh, September 7th to 8th, uh, the rumors about another top GOP member of the House being involved in sexual encounters with young men for hire are confirmed to my website by well-placed sources in Washington's gay community. Uh, that was Hastert, by the way. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, several other, s several other um, uh, reports, uh, uh, again, all surrounding the, the Foley matter. But I think it's important to point out that the Foley, uh, the Foley situation uh, involved other members of Congress all running for cover and trying to uh, hire members of Foley's staff because uh, they were implicated. Uh, Representative Tom Reynolds from New York, uh, Shimkus, uh, Dennis, Dennis Hastert's uh, fellow Republican congressman from Illinois, who was a member of the House Page Board. No, a lot of this has to do with the Page Board, the governing body. You know, the House Page Board doesn't exist. The House Page system doesn't even exist anymore because of the Foley uh, scandal. They got rid of it. Uh, it still exists in the Senate, however. So it's basically, as best I can tell, a cult of pedophiles and that you can't get in unless you're part of it. And they basically, like the Catholic Church, uh, taken it over. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of funny anecdotes. I, I mean, it's a serious case. I remember uh, walk, uh, walking with um, uh, a friend of mine and we encountered uh, Charlie Rangel back in those days in, in the uh, rotunda. And, and we, you know, if you're with somebody and they kind of look at something and it's like an inside, they have some inside information. Well, here comes Hastert walking across the rotunda with a, uh, a young, uh, very young uh, male page. Obviously, you, you see members of Congress with their senior staffers, chief of staff all the time. But this was very unusual. And I noticed a wry smile on Congressman Rangel's face. Like he knew something, <laughs> and uh, you know, with with you know the neuro linguistics on that one said everything. And um, I actually had the opportunity of running into Hastert after he was speaker at the GOP convention in 2000 in Tampa. There was kind of a a a, 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 a people traffic jam in the um, uh, arena, and uh, he was standing right next to me. And I looked at him and I said, "How how's retired?" life treating you, uh, Mr. Speaker. 
using the honorific, uh, uh, I know he wasn't speaker, but it's the DC thing. Um, and he said, um, he said, good. And then he said, I, oh, I did, I forgot your name. And I told him and the guy turned pale and said, I got to get back to my Illinois delegation. So clearly he recalled the reports that I had on his misconduct back in 06. Oh, you're definitely on target. And, and Wayne, we talked about this last time you were here. I'm just going to, you, you agreed to do it. We never hammered it out. You're hired. I want to get you on every week. I want you writing for InfoWars. We need to talk details today because, you know, years just go by like seconds, as you know, and I need you on the InfoWars team. So we're, we're going to get that done, aren't we? Sure, sure. Yeah, you're right about years going by, especially at 61. I, 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 I feel the uh, the rush of the years. Well, going. hey, listen, I mean, I'm no hastard, so don't worry, I'm not going to ask you on a date, but you lost a lot of weight, man. You're looking good. <laughs> well, I'm trying. No, no, you're doing great. Here we go. I'm excited. We've talked about this a couple times he's been here. We've discussed it. I've just never gotten it done, but we just agreed in there. I'm hiring Wayne Madsen. He'll still have WayneMadsenReport.com to be a full-time reporter for InfoWars.com. I mean, he's one of the best out there. We finally built this operation. We're going on cable. We're going on all the systems. We're already picked up by a lot of cable and TV systems already. We're on over 170 AM and FM affiliates. What I'm doing here at InfoWars.com is building a true media operation. Yes, I'm the rabble rouser. I'm the pundit. Uh, but I bring you the bombshell guest, the intel, the reporters. Joe Biggs is going to be on the ground at the Draw Prophet Muhammad uh, demonstration tonight uh, in Phoenix. So all of that is coming up uh, as well. And, and this is what I need. Four or five uh, more reporters, a couple of text writers, a couple of guys that can do both, a um, couple of ladies you know, that can do both, so that we can really cover three or four big stories simultaneously with people on the ground. Okay, if you can, this is so big. Wayne Madsen wrote, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, we're in his archives right now, in 2006 about Dennis Hastert and connections to pedophile rings and compromised Congress people. He's taken from nowhere, put into the House of Representatives, accelerated into Republican leadership that, you know, Ron Paul was there 20-something years and never got put in any leadership. Put into leadership, and then Boehner was under him. And Boehner's connected to all this, so I want to specifically recap it and get into Boehner and then ask Wayne Madsen before we shift gears into ISIS, the economy, and more. This signifies uh, trying to scare people in the Republican House to get in line on the TPP, to get in line on a bunch of other issues. And so I want to ask you what you think it signifies and where all this is going with Obama's unprecedented persecution. I'm not crying... For, for, for Denny Hastert, but un unprecedented persecution of the press and others. Wayne Madsen. Well, I mean, we're getting into the um, um, 2016 presidential race, so we're going to probably see a lot more of this. Of course, Hastert's not a candidate, but somebody who uh, basically defended this uh, activity is a candidate. And uh, I would just cite that at the time that I made these reports and October of 2006, the St. Petersburg time on October 4th, 06, it's now the Tampa Bay Times, reported on the knowledge of top Florida Republicans, including then Governor Jeb Bush and Attorney General Charlie Crist, who was then a Republican, about the foley Hastert scandal in Washington. And this is a quote from the St. Pete Times. In a gaggle with Florida's Capitol Press Corps Wednesday, Governor Jeb Bush flatly refused allegations posted on it an internet website and circulated widely Tuesday that claims Bush, Attorney General Charlie Chris, and Florida Department of Law Enforcement were all told by the Federal Justice Department about Mark Foley's emails a year ago but covered it up. The alleged conspiracy source to inform sources in Tallahassee who were not named was reported on the Wayne Matson Report website. Matson's website claims to tackle the politically incorrect and politically embarrassing stories and holds government officials accountable for their actions. Bush um, that responded to a question from the St. Pete Times reporter in Tallahassee about my report. And he said, if the next governor, referring to Charlie Chris, who was running for the seat uh, to secede Bush, is going to have to respond to every blog and every tired little anonymous person 
who has some bitter part in their soul who wants to express it on the internet, it's not going to work, unquote. That was now presidential candidate Jeb Bush, his comment on the, uh, the Hastert Foley scandal at the time. Why was he interested in covering it up? Well, that's the word that going back uh, that it wasn't Reagan that had the call boys in there, that <laughs> it was <laughs> that it was George Herbert Walker Bush yes. uh, and that it goes all the way back to that. And that's what The Washington Times reported hundreds. Wasn't it hundreds? In fact, we can pull the news article up, the scan of it of The Washington Times. Wasn't it hundreds of times underage call boys were visiting after midnight? Well, there were reports that Bush was seen at these get togethers in Nebraska where they would fly, in some cases, either fly uh, child prostitutes in or uh, get them out of Boys Town, the, uh, the Roman Catholic uh, the famous uh, orphanage outside of Omaha. Well, it also ties in, doesn't it, Wayne, to Penn State? I mean, we know Sandusky is, is, is in there raping people um, from this, you know, troubled youth group uh, at high noon on Saturdays. I mean, a field house on the weekend is a busy place. Uh, he certainly felt like he was uh, safe. So, so here's the other question. Why are they now busting people when they've been good, helpful servants of Sauron? Well, you know, I mean, it's the nature of Washington. That, that, that place will eat their own uh, alive. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's getting worse and worse there because, you uh, one thing about the uh, Congress, uh, they used to have statesmen. The worst thing you would catch them on is getting drunk in public or messing around with a prostitute of the opposite sex. I'm thinking, you know, Wilbur Mills and Wayne Hayes and people, Kennedy. people like that. But it, 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 nowadays, it, it's uh, getting into more of the illegal aspects, which uh, which is underage uh, sex. But uh, is that because it's a club? And just like in the mafia or, or street gangs, you've got to commit some horrible crime uh, that people have to prove themselves and be compromised. Isn't that classic criminal psychology? Oh, I think it's a blackmail operation from the word go. Look, at, I mean, look at some of the, these people. We have David Vitter, uh, the senator from Louisiana, now running for governor. I mean, he was paying prostitutes. Uh, he would soil his diaper and then they would uh, scold him and spank him and have to clean him up. I mean... You know, what is the matter with a state that would elect an individual like that to be their U.S. senator? And it keeps coming out. Uh, what about uh, the Senator Lindsey Graham? I uh, mean, I, I've got it from a lot of Washington sources that uh, he's really compromised. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, uh, the, 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 I, I've said for a lo long time the GOP nowadays stands for, uh, g you know, gray old perverts. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 of course, I, I've had... People from the major newspaper in South Carolina, which is the state out of the capital, Columbia, say, why isn't anyone in Washington reporting on our pretty well-known gay senator, Lindsey Graham, who, by the way, publicly is anti-gay rights? But how many times have we seen that? Those who, who proclaim this the loudest. Uh, I mean, Rick Santorum, who announced the other day for the presidency, once again, he, he was uh, a, a good friend of Jerry Sandusky at Penn State. And, and then, of course, you know, they all run run from these guys after they get caught, as I'm sure many of them are saying about Hastert. They're saying, Dennis, who? Uh, the amazing thing is Hastert was third in line uh, for the presidency. So think back to 9-11. And, uh, you know, uh, although we know that was an inside operation, but what if uh, what if Bush had been uh, uh, harmed that day and Cheney became president? Then that would have made Hastert second in line for the presidency. That's pretty scary to know that somebody that blackmailed uh, could have wound up in that type well, of... Well, sure, but I mean, looking at Sandusky, looking at Hazard, it's not that they were fat. I mean, everybody can get fat. I've been overweight. They, they look like something's wrong with them. I mean, I wouldn't buy a car from them. I wouldn't associate with them. They look like deranged scum. And, and people say, don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, no, I mean, you, you, uh, quite frankly, you can judge people generally by looking them in the eye, shaking their hand, listening to them, and seeing how they act. I look at the Republican leadership and the Democratic leadership, they look like a bunch of perverts. They look like a bunch of uh, Jeffrey Dahmers. I mean, I'm sorry, they look like a bunch of scum. Right, right. And I mean, and, and, and you know, we're talking about Republicans, but I'm still not satisfied that Harry Reid 
uh, damn, damn near put his eye out as a result of an accident with his, uh, his uh, weight, weight machine or treadmill or whatever it was. Um, uh, you know, that that defies logic. What uh, about Bush that kept getting beaten up and he had to have double black eyes and bloody lips? He'd say he fell down. I mean, that's not true. Uh, he was uh, the one time he he had the, the, the mark on his cheek uh, was uh, from pretzel. the time he, he choked on a pretzel, he said. But I heard he was. Uh, very, very drunk that day. He was watching some football and passed out. Um, so again, this uh, for for those of uh, viewers and listeners who um, um, uh, think Washington is a den of iniquity, I can tell you, uh, tell them all it is. I've seen it firsthand. Why did they kill the D.C. madam? I mean, I know you knew her well. You helped get her on the show. What happened there? I mean, she wasn't talking or, or are they just getting rid of loose ends? Well, she had some more information. She had documents she was about ready to release. We don't know what happened to that, by the way. She was seen removing a box of documents from a condo in Orlando and taking it to her mother's home in, in Tarpon Springs in Tampa Bay, Florida. And, and we don't know what happened to that. But she she had there were other um, other shoes that were going to drop in that matter. I know she was trying to get out of uh, the U.S. and move to e what was formerly East Berlin. She bought an apartment over there. I think it, for her, it was a safe house. Uh, and I think it was a former CIA safe house because of the work she had done as a madam for the Central Intelligence Agency. Absolutely. She was probably with the Central Intelligence Agency officially, undoubtedly unofficially. So this is how they treat their own yet again. We'll be back. I want to move out of uh, the, the whole blackmail system, unless he's got other points he wants to add and get into ISIS. It's so transparent that uh, ISIS is Western funded and being protected. And I see these headlines. Pentagon is tweaking their ISIS strategy. They don't know what to do. It's a, it's a Saudi Arabian proxy army taking over. The Iraqi government has testimony and video. I mean, we knew it before it even happened. We said that they were going to change the name to confuse the public. And then I want to get into just other general areas. But before we do that, Wayne... You were talking about the climate getting crazier, the self-destructiveness, the starting stuff with China, the starting stuff with Russia. Nobody's lionizing those countries, but it seems like the elite really are bravada, chutzpah driven. And it, it really is scary, uh, you know, covering D.C., being up in D.C., off and on between Florida. What is the climate? Where do you expect Obama to go in his last uh, year and a half in office? Uh, the executive power grabs, I mean, all of it, the Republicans rolling over to everything, uh, but still being indicted. Uh, what are the Democrats thinking and who's in charge? Well, I think I, I think Obama is, would like to speed up the clock and be out of office a lot sooner. Uh, I, I noticed he was pretty listless when he spoke yesterday at the National Hurricane Center in Miami about everybody getting prepared for uh the hurricane season. Uh, I, I just had the impression he would have like. He seemed like he wanted to be somewhere else, uh, anywhere but at the National Hurricane uh, Center, telling uh, telling Americans to uh, how to go and access ready.com or ready.gov or whatever the website is. Uh, I, I think he's uh, and he's like other presidents. He's looking at his post presidency. The the museum and library are going to be in South Chicago with. Apparently, a satellite uh, facility in Hawaii. He'll have his new money laundering operation foundation, like the Clintons. Or the Obama Foundation. Uh, uh, I I would hope he won't be as crooked as the Clintons are uh, have been with that. I mean, shaking down uh, countries and companies for donations, uh, and then and then steering U.S. Uh, policy towards uh, their favorite projects, which apparently is what Hillary was doing. Well, that's my, I mean, she's cut and dry having third world dictators give her money. So she allows the state department to authorize weapons transfers. This is the most criminal stuff you can imagine. Meanwhile, they're busting Hastert for covering up some wrestler, you know, high school wrestler. He buggered. Well, you know, <laughs> they ought to, they ought to, they ought to bust all of them. In my opinion, uh, there's very few, in Washington, who oh, uh, I agree, bust them all. But how does Hillary <laughs> get away with it? I, I mean, well, because they love her. She's uh, uh, look how they extol her. I mean, she's got she's got two um, um, challengers for the Democratic nomination who who don't get any uh, press attention hardly. And when they do, it's it's sort of like oh, these guys are also rans. Uh, 
started sure. out Bernie Sanders and Martin O'Malley from uh, Maryland. But uh, this, this is how the media operates. You know, when I broke that Hastert story, I was just, I, I commented on that because uh, back in 06, uh, Anna Marie Cox, who was then Wong Ket, if you recall that, that blog, um, this was her comment on my report on Hastert. She said, the problem is Wayne Matson just makes S word up. Uh, we hear from well-placed sources that no one is having sex with Dennis Hastert. Um, well, I, I hope uh, Ms. Cox uh, likes her crow, uh, even though it's a cold, it's, uh, it's served as a cold dish now. Um, but uh, uh, I, 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 I'm only as good as my sources. And in that case, not only were the sources people in, who knew about Hastert in, in uh, Northern Illinois in the Chicago area, but members of the gay community in Washington were very open about this guy and, and what a, you know, what a basically a hypocrite he was, you know, supporting anti-gay rights, uh, uh, you know, moves by the House. Yet everyone knew that uh, his own secret life, he... Uh, sure, and you could tell body language. You've seen him prancing around with his boyfriend. Yeah, that, that was uh, uh, that was one where you had to be there. It was myself, my colleague, and Charlie Rangel. We just saw, thought that was so odd that... Here is the Speaker of the House with a very, very young uh, page. Normally, those guys are back in the office working, and he's acting like it's his chief of staff, his closest uh, assistant. And, you know, as I say, even Charlie Rangel looked over at that and, you know, had that wry smile like, uh, yeah, there he goes again. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, we're going to be back and get into ISIS, get into geopolitics and more with Wayne Madsen. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Supreme Court to rule they can start taking private pension funds, and I see the very same banks doing it in every country they run. I'm here raising the alarm. I don't think of that as exceptional. But I guess it is, and I think that's why we're in so much trouble. It's exceptional that Wayne Madsen's broken. So many big stories, I can't even count them. And what's even more exceptional is that you hardly ever hear about it in the mainstream media. There's some comments today going, yeah, Wayne Madsen said this in some major newspapers. Where are the apologies? Where are the apologies that I had guessed on, whistleblowers like Springman, about the CIA ordering known terrorists into the country before 9-11 and ordering the FBI to stand down? That's now in the 28 pages. It's now admitted. Where are the apologies from Glenn Beck and Fox News and all of them? They're never going to come. And, and it's not about me. It's not about Wayne Madsen. But it is about the truth and how it triumphs. And I know Wayne because I, I know him well. He's a really good guy, even though he's not bragging. I'd imagine he's savoring, not on a power trip, but just savoring the fact that the truth outs, the truth ends up always surfacing, uh, and that after all he's gone through, turning down bigger jobs, money, being harassed, death-threatened, demonized, attacked, that more and more what he's written about is coming true. It's very exciting. You can see clips, a compilation with links to his website, his news site, WayneMadsonReport.com, at Infowars.com. Flashback. Investigative journalist broke key speaker Hastert blackmail sex scandal. In 2006, again, investigative journalist broke ex-speaker Hastert blackmail scandal in 2006. In 2006, Hastert was involved with a cover-up of a major sex scandal involving Republican congressmen. And I see a few commenters in, on YouTube and Infowars saying, why do we care about some old corrupt weirdo? I'm glad he's been indicted, and this isn't even a story. Who cares? Arrest them all. It isn't about this molding piece of cheese. It, it's about the fact that they selectively are doing it. Why are they doing it? What does it signify? And does it mean they're about to roll up Boehner and the rest of these guys? This could be a coup against who's left in the Republican Party. And the Republicans could start striking back with all their dirt. This, I think, signifies a major war going on behind the scenes. That's what it generally does. And it just adds to this whole season of craziness. I want to close the book on this again to some other big stories you're working on, Wayne, but in your gut, your sources, am I on to something here, or what do you think this signifies, or is it rogue FBI agents doing their job? Uh, what do you think is happening? 
this isn't over yet, Alex. I was I, I would be remiss if I didn't add that uh, among the House leadership at the outset of this uh, uh, House page scandal are three current U.S. senators who uh, uh, two of them were members of the House at the time. Uh, Roy Blunt, who's now a senator from Missouri, Shelley Moore Capito, who's now a senator from West Virginia, and the tutor of the House pages, the tutor, the person in charge of the security of these pages, who apparently was either asleep on the job or knew what was going on and looked the other way, is now the a U.S. senator from the state of Nebraska, Ben Sass. You got to be careful how you say that because it sounds like Ben's ass if, you, if you're not <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like whoever runs the stable of these uh, pages ends up getting a lot of power real quick. Great. You mentioned that, uh, uh, the stabling. That was another thing that I, I reported on back then, that because the senators have larger staffs, they would bring in a lot of young uh, uh, male staffers and, and stable them. That was the word that was used at the time, stable them there, where they would then be able to be farmed out over to the House side. In other words, I guess the senators would go over and look and see which one they like. Yeah, it's like going to a whorehouse and picking which one you want. Three senators who were mentioned to me in respect to that were George Allen from Virginia, Rick Santorum from Pennsylvania, and Jim Talent from Missouri. Unbelievable. Uh, none of them are in the Senate any longer. Why has this story kind of cooled off? Cover up because, you know, the Catholic Church thing just keeps coming out. Uh, is every major institution infested with pedos? Well, look, I, you know, my first, my first experience with them was when I was with the Navy in 1982. I was the operations officer at a classified Navy facility in Oregon, and, and the FBI and NCIS, which is now uh, NCIS, it was NIS at the time, came to me and said, look, we need you to help us investigate your commanding officer. I said, for what? They said, mm -hmm. he's a kingpin in his child pornography uh, ring uh, based in where? Chicago, of all places. Uh, and uh, he wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only military officer. There were admirals involved. And, and then, of course, later, we, you know, in the later in the 80s, we found out how high up it went right to the White House, which is one of the one of the original FBI agents told me at the time uh, when we were doing a postmortem on that investigation. He says, you know, this thing goes all the way to the White House. I was shocked. I talk a lot about this with Joel Scalzi and other people, light side, dark side, and government. Government's not our enemy, but it, it, it is filled with clicks of bad guys, clicks of good people. Percentage-wise, I mean, you've been around the block. Is the government more corrupt or less corrupt, or do we just know more now and it's the same? And take the FBI. I mean, sometimes the FBI does great things, sometimes it does bad things, sometimes it's political, sometimes it's not. Does it depend on the division? Basically, what's the lay of the land from your research? How many of these people are good? How many are bad? I think it's getting worse because in the old days, what was the worst they would get a member of Congress on? Well, bribes, taking money, uh, you know, remember Adam Clayton Powell and people like that. I mean, they were actually good congressmen for their districts, but they, you know, had sticky fingers when it came to money. Well, that, of course, that's bad, taking money, taking uh, bribes. But now we're into the, you know, this really bizarre stuff. Uh, I mentioned Vitter with the, uh, the diaper, they call him Diaper Dave. And and, um, you know, now this stuff with Hastert and, and Foley and Larry Craig, uh, Mr. White stance at the Minneapolis uh, men's room uh, uh, stall uh, being arrested by an undercover vice cop. Uh, you know, th th this stuff that started in the early 80s with Bob Bauman, the Republican conservative congressman from Maryland who was arrested in a men's room. And it, it's just gotten worse since. Uh, I'm not saying that they didn't have... Mm -hmm. Things like this happen in the past, but uh, it, it, it certainly was uh, not uh, uh, reported by the press if it was going on. But I think it's more. There's more of this going on now from my vantage point. Well, the issue I notice is the more fairy-like a, Congress, a congressman is, the more anti-gay they are. And then they, they, and then they get busted you know, out in a bathroom. And I'm not bashing anybody. I'm just using that term because they act effeminate. They, they, you know, they act like the classic thing where you'd be in a grocery store and say, hey, I bet that guy's gay over there. Uh, but then that's their right. Then it graduates into really deviant criminal stuff. And I just don't get it. I, I just don't understand it. But then I guess that's who gravitates toward power. What percentage, and I've asked this of a lot of people in Washington, uh, what percentage 
are gay versus pedophiles versus heterosexual? And are there more pedos in either party, Wayne, or how, how does this work? Well, I think you're right. I think it's the ones who, who wake up in the morning and start yelling and screaming about gay rights. Uh, I mean, what do they do? They live and breathe this every day. They're usually the ones that are caught. Uh, you know, these people, I mean, they have a problem. Uh, and, and, and nine times out of 10, uh, you meant, you know, we were talking about Miss South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a perfect example where everybody uh, in South Carolina knows about him, but yet he's the first one to stand up on the soapbox and, and talk about how, you know, we, we can't have uh, same-sex marriage and all these other things. So I think, it, you know, it, I, I do recall that one, one person back in the early 80s who was going to be censured by the House for running a call boy service uh, allegedly out of his uh, basement of his townhouse said, look, uh, you go after me, I'm going to right now name 25% of the House members I know, and this is back then, so it was different kind of mindset. That's Barney Part Frank a. on the House floor. That was Barney Frank, right, exactly. And, and they were mostly Republicans he was talking about. So uh, obviously... Uh, that, you know, there was no interest in pursuing that uh, to any sort of... Well, that's of my issue, though. They don't indict him, but they indict Hastert. Is this then, do you think, or do you know, a war, uh, a blackmail war to get the Republicans to go along with stuff? Because well, they don't need to. The Republicans are doing whatever they're told. Well, I'm afraid that with all the powers that NSA has to do fishnet uh, trawling of, of mega data, bulk data, that uh, this is the type of thing... Uh, that can result from that, that they go on fishing expeditions. And if they find, remember, they got Hastert really for uh, failing to uh, report uh, currency transactions. He, he started, he, first he took out $50,000 from bank accounts, and then he kept it under the $10,000 threshold. If you go over $10,000, there's an automatic report made uh, under federal banking regulations uh, uh, to, to the federal government, to the IRS and others. But if, if NSA is trolling uh, everybody's uh, bank accounts and transactions, email, what have you, uh, yeah, they can get this information. So I'm, I'm wondering uh, whether we're going to see a lot more of this because of the NSA power uh, to eavesdrop. Yet, yet some of these congressmen that are in, in jeopardy and extremists are the biggest supporters of uh, expanded NSA uh, wiretapping and uh, collection uh, uh, a yeah, what was it our guest said yesterday, Joel Skousen? Evil always carries with it the seeds of its own destruction. And it's crazy. Yeah, these guys do what destroys them. They they dig a pit for us, and then they fall into it. Right. They're not thinking ahead. That's for that's for sure, because uh, they're, they're the ones that have the most to lose. Uh, uh, because even after they leave Congress, what happens? They could become lobbyists, in many cases, for foreign governments. That stuff is all fair game for the NSA. That's right. Once they work for a foreign government, uh, it's, it's open to be spied on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's another thing. How does Hillary take money from dictators at the State Department through her foundation to then let them have billion-dollar weapon systems? That is just so over-the-top cut and dry. Right. And, and look, she even took money from the, the, the FIFA, the World Cup sponsoring organization. They of course, indicted several officials. Uh, See, what is that about? I mean, you've got just f incredible crime going on all over the country, banks laundering hundreds of billions, running the aircraft, uh, you know, running white slavery rings, and they're going to harass the soccer commission. Yeah. No no banker uh, was indicted as a result of that settlement that announced by uh, the, the new uh, attorney general, Loretta Lynch. But yeah, $5.8 billion to steal trillions. Right, they go after non-U.S. citizens are going to extradite them to the United States. I think that has to do with the fact that in 2018, Russia is sponsoring, the is going to be the host of the World Cup, and Palestine recently asked FIFA to expel Israel because Israel uh, has interfered with uh, the Palestinian FIFA team's ability to uh, play soccer uh, in their home uh, territory. So it may be some retaliation against FIFA of uh, for that and uh i wouldn't put that past uh, this administration uh after all what we've seen them do in rattling the sabers against russia and now china i don't know uh, obama if he if he doesn't have much to do before he leaves office he ought to just identify all the neocons that stayed in this administration from the past one and fire the lot of them get rid of all of them because they're putting this uh country and the world in jeopardy 
as a result of, um, of these policies. Well, Putin is coming out and saying that it's basically to screw up. They're, they're hosting the World Cup. And that's really what this all comes down to is a war on Russia. And again, I don't lionize Putin, uh, but I'm not into starting fights. And the West and Soros is starting the fight. And then Soros has the nerve to run around and whine and go, don't, uh, don't start World War III when, when he's bragging on Fareed Zarkaria uh, on CNN that he, quote, uh, basically toppled Ukraine. Yeah, he, Soros sees a way to make money if there's a war with China or Russia. He's now trying to overthrow the government of Macedonia the same way he did it in Ukraine. And that, that you know, playing around with the Balkans. Remember what happened 101 years ago in the Balkans? Sarajevo assassination. World War One. World War One, the war that uh, they said war to end all wars. Of course, it wasn't. But uh, uh, that that's why this guy Soros needs to be put in a straitjacket. And, 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 you know, uh, in a place like Hannibal Lecter, where he... Well, he's yeah. beyond... Exactly. How... <laughs> comic book bad guys are one thing. And when I grew up, I thought there's nobody really like this until I sort of... Soros, I mean, a weirdo Nazi collaborator, yeah. 87 years old, involved toppling governments, trying to put radical Islamists to control the Middle East, trying to... I mean, he is, he is, he is a horrible person. He's a, he's the perfect James Bond villain. I don't know which one he would be, uh, whether it'd be uh, Blofeld or or Goldfinger or 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 Carver, but he's probably a mixture of all of them put together. But you know, his name is Georgie Schwartz. He adopted George Soros. Soros. It's spelled backwards and forwards the same way. Uh, God, Ian Fleming missed out on this guy as a villain. Let's get into ISIS. We got one more segment. I really appreciate your time, Wayne Madsen, investigative journalist who broke the Hastert news. Gosh, nine years ago, that's up on Infowars.com. Spread that around. Flashback investigative journalist broke ex-Speaker Hatchard's blackmail sex scandal in 06. Read the excerpts there. Wayne, uh, ISIS, I mean, this is so naked. How's it going for ISIS? How's it going for Saudi Arabia? Uh, and can they keep it hidden from the public that NATO's running the whole deal? Well, the group Judicial Watch managed to get a hold of this um, declassified uh, Defense Intelligence Agency message, uh, which basically from 2012, it states uh, that the Western powers, uh, the Gulf states and Turkey uh, should all support these radical Syrian groups to bring down Assad. Uh, they talked about who they were, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, which became ISIL or ISIS, um, the, um, the Muslim Brotherhood, and um, um, uh, the the other um, the other um, uh, Syrian uh, rebel group. Uh, they they call the Salafists or the uh, uh, Salafists. Yes, yeah, thank you. It. The Salafists, and they're basically Wahhabists who tow the uh, Saudi uh, Wahhabist line. Uh, so here we have uh, a, a, a proof that the U.S. was uh, responsible for this. John Brennan is the real godfather of ISIL. Here's a guy uh, who. Um, was a former CIA station chief in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, is very much a pro-Saudi person. Uh, and, uh, and there are reports that he visited Mecca, which you can only really do if you're a personal guest of the Saudi king or you're a convert to uh, Islam. And I think there was a former FBI agent who said, yes, uh, 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 Brennan did convert to Islam. And we know that he, remember he- Stay there, let's break it down. This is so bombshell, folks, you understand. Somebody's risking their life to give Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch is risking getting arrested. They arrest whistleblower groups now. I mean, I'd be scared to put it out if I got something like that. I, I would. Defense intelligence that our government put Al-Qaeda in charge over there. I mean, that's big. That's proof. Communist China. Wayne Madsen, of course, and many others at the tip of the spear exposing that. Now Bloomberg reported today, declassified, U.S. saw Islamic State coming. Let it take Ramadi. What did we tell you weeks ago? They're arming them. The Iraqi government's caught them. They're led by foreign commandos. They've been trained by NATO, U.S., Israeli, and other troops. And folks, no, I'm not anti-Israel. I'm not anti-Turkey. I'm not anti-anybody. But man, any government that, uh, that helps Al-Qaeda murder Christians and these Salafists, same group, it's crazy. It's, it's, it just shows how evil our government is. Peaceful Christians by the hundreds of thousands are being displaced.
Tens of thousands are being killed. Libya is a failed state. I want to get into that with Wayne Madsen in the last few minutes here with him. But first, Wayne, I saw on your website you got something pretty neat happening next Friday. In fact, if I had enough reporters, or if you can get somebody, you're going to be working with us soon, I'd have them walk with you live with a Skype feed and uh, you know, uh, carry the feed on the nightly news at least or a recording of it or parts of it on the live show. You're doing something really exciting as a historian uh, and not just a former NSA guy and reporter uh, with a, a spy walking tour. Uh, tell us about that. Well, on uh, Friday, uh, the 5th of June at 930, gathering at the National Press Club uh, at the corner of uh, 14th and F Streets in, in downtown D.C., we're going to have a spy and scandal walking tour of the downtown area to mark the 10th anniversary of my website. I can't believe I've been doing this this long, but this, the Hastert story brought it all back. That was 2006, the second year of the website. So uh, we'll be hitting a lot of the uh, places that I've written about. And uh, uh, and if there's time, we'll even go walk by uh, the law firm of Dickstein Shapiro, which is uh, Dennis Hastert's uh, law firm, which apparently he's uh, resigned from their government uh, practices uh, 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 branch uh, yesterday. So uh, there's many scandals within a few blocks of uh, uh, the National Press Club and the White House, which is two blocks away. So it should be a pretty good time. Yeah, see, and if we were a free country, th th this would be on Nightline. And we get top ratings, too. I mean, you know, telling the truth also gets ratings, but they won't let you do it because it would destroy their whole criminal system. But it's all coming to an end. What do you make of even Bloomberg reporting that basically the U.S. is working with al-Qaeda to take over Iraq? I mean, this is insane, and take over areas of Syria. No, it was clear this this whole operation was to it started with getting rid of Saddam and then Gaddafi in Libya and now uh, Assad in Syria, uh, Yemen uh, now a mess, a civil war. Uh, all those governments were secular, uh, and now they're, uh, we run the risk of them being replaced by these Salafist uh, regimes, uh, where as you say, they not only uh, kill uh, Shias, uh, other Sunni Muslims, Christians and other minorities, but also uh, destroy antiquities, uh, uh, priceless, uh, irreplaceable uh, uh, World Heritage sites. Execute uh, women if they get caught not wearing gloves. I mean, give me a break, man. Our government's funding people that sexually mutilate women and make them wear gloves. I mean, I'm just, I'm done. I'm right. done with the scum that runs our government. And, and, you know, this defense intelligence leak, that shows people inside are really upset too, right, Wayne? Yes, because I looked at that at that message and un, unusually the header information, you know, the from, we don't know where it's from, that's been blocked out. Some of the some of the uh, uh, action and info at ease at the top of the message have been blacked out. Normally they don't black that out, but they let the bit remain about the um, uh, uh, U.S. and Israel and Western Europe, uh, Turkey and the Gulf states, Saudi Arabia and Qatar supporting these radicals uh, to overthrow us. Yeah, the military is just really upset. I think the globalists have gone too far. Wayne Madsen, thank you so much. God bless you. It's good to have you on the team.